Welcome to Virtual Worship at Trinity Lutheran Church. This is the worship service for Sunday, April 7th, 2024, the second Sunday of Easter. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! We know that Easter is not just a single day, but Easter is a season, a 50-day season, because one day is not enough to celebrate the joy of the resurrection. So we will be celebrating for many more days. April 21st, we have the dedication of the labyrinth, that beautiful space behind our church building, uh, a place where people can have an opportunity to take a meditative walk in a beautiful natural scene. So we're going to dedicate that space on the 21st, like I said, after the 9 o'clock worship service around 10.05, 10.10. But the space is open now, so if you would like to walk the Labyrinth, you are welcome to do so. Also, on May 4th, Saturday, May 4th, there is a Women's Day, uh, a day for prayer, for Bible study, for engaging in spiritual practices. And if you would like to be part of that, you can contact Mrs. Burgess in the church office or you can contact Tammy Anderson, our coordinator of spiritual practices. That'll be a day, like I said, it's a day for the women of the congregation to gather together for, for Bible study, for, uh, for prayer, for engaging in a variety of spiritual practices, including walking the labyrinth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The first reading is from the first chapter of 1 Peter, beginning at the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that through, though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel comes among us in the words of St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen 
and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. It is the second Sunday of Easter. We are continuing our celebration of the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus, that incredible event that happened 2,000 years ago, was just the beginning. That God's power continues to flow into this world. That that was not a one-time thing. Yes, that, that raising of Jesus from the tomb was the, the event, as you know, that, that changed the world. And yet, that was just the start. It was just the start of God's presence and power flowing out into the world in a new way. Because, of course, God, had, God has always been active. God has been active in the world from the very beginning. And throughout history, God has been active in the lives of people and in the, in the events of the world. God is present and with us. And yet the, the death and resurrection of Jesus changes things. It helps us as humans to see the world in a new way. To see the world, to see the world from the perspective of the God of love. To see the world from the perspective of the God of mercy, who came into our world in Jesus, who was willing to die on the cross, forgive the people who crucified him, and then rise again to show that love is stronger than hate, and that life is the last word, that death is not the last word. That's the, that's the message that, that comes into our world through Jesus' death and resurrection, and it continues to move out into our world. And some of the benefits that come from that message, from that presence of God, of Jesus, present in the Holy Spirit in our lives, there, there are many, many blessings that come through that. And, and one of them that we, that we see in today's Gospel reading is the gift of peace. And maybe that's a pretty good place to, uh, to start to, to show the effects of the resurrection as we celebrate this Easter season, because it does seem like there is not a lot of peace in the world today. It seems like there is a lot of war. In the Holy Land itself, there is terrible, terrible war in Gaza. Horrible, horrible things, horrible things happening. Horrible things happened in Israel back on October 7th. Just tragedy upon tragedy. And what's going to happen? How is that, how is that going to re be resolved? Hostages still being held in Gaza. People have been kidnapped and brutalized and tortured. What, what, what's going to happen? All those, all those children who are hungry in Gaza, all those children who died and who are starving, what's, what's going to happen? It seems like there is no peace. And that's just there, right? We think of there so many other places where there is war and brutality and death. You think of Ukraine. Things still happening in Syria. It's not in the news very much, but it's still, it's still pretty terrible. Yemen, Yemen. We hear about Yemen because the, the, the Houthis are attacking ships in the Red Sea, which is a horrible, horrible thing. And yet the people in Yemen suffering under that civil war is still, again, just terrible. There is so, there is so much violence in the world. And Jesus, one of the main things, one of the main gifts that Jesus brings is peace. And we know that there's not just violence in the world in faraway places, there's there's violence here in our own country. There's violence in our own neighborhoods. There is a lack of peace in many of our lives, right? Whether it's conflict with others, whether it's conflict between family members, whether it's our own deep unease and lack of peace. And Jesus comes into the world. Jesus comes into the world, lives dies and rises again 
And, and, and what he says to the disciples, the first thing that he says to the gathered disciples after his resurrection, when he walks into that locked room, is he says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Shalom. God's peace. God's wholeness. God's presence and healing power. That shalom that renews and, and brings the world back to the place where, where God wants it to be. It's not just a lack of conflict or a lack of violence, but it's a shalom is a sense of wholeness and completeness and connection. And that's what Jesus says to, to, to those disciples who are in a locked room still afraid. They still, they, they don't get it yet that Jesus is alive. They are hiding. They think that they are the next people who are going to end up on the cross at the, at the beginning of this passage. That's why the doors are locked. They think they're going to get arrested and they will end up just like Jesus, nailed to a cross or executed or dead somehow. They're afraid. And Jesus brings them peace. And like I said, not just the peace of the absence of conflict or a lack of a removal of violence, but the peace of wholeness, the peace of connection with God and one another. And that peace comes even in the midst of all the conflict that they're experiencing, all of the persecution that they're experiencing, and all of the fear that they are undergoing. Jesus brings them peace. And yet, it is, it is hard for them to live into that peace, even though, even though they see Jesus, and they know that it's really him. That's the whole point of, here are my hands, look at my side. Jesus shows them that he's not, he's not some kind of ghost. He's not some kind of hallucination. This is Jesus. Jesus who died is now risen. The same Jesus that they knew, that they walked around Galilee and Jerusalem with, that same Jesus is alive again. The one who died is alive again. And he is the one who brings them peace, who brings them the opportunity to more deeply connect with God and more deeply connect with each other and, and then to bring that message out into the world. Because what happens, as soon as he, as soon as he offers them that peace, he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. And you might think you might you might think okay yeah this is this is kind of a parallel of the Genesis story right that God breathes the breath of life into Adam's nostrils and that's when Adam becomes a living being at the very beginning of the story and that this is in fact a new beginning this is a new beginning and Jesus breathes the spirit breathes the breath of life into the disciples so that they are filled with God's spirit they're filled with the holy spirit so that they can go out and bring this good news. They can bring the good news of the resurrection. They can bring the good news of God's peace and love out into the world. And so Jesus breathes on them and says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And one would think that this would be, that this would really be the beginning, right? That how can you, how could they not just immediately go out and start sharing this incredible reality with all the people around them. I mean, they saw Jesus get crucified, now, now, and now he's alive. And he's alive on a new level, right? He could walk through closed, locked doors into the room with them. There's something incredible happening here, and he is bringing them peace and connection with God, and, and, and then sending them to say, share this with others invite others into this relationship with my father. But they don't do it, right? A week later, a week later, they're back in the same place, doing the same thing, just sitting behind the closed doors. As far as we know, 
even though Jesus sent them, even though Jesus breathed on them and gave them the power of the Holy Spirit, apparently they couldn't do it. They could. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't go out. And of course, this this time, Thomas was, was not with them the first time that Jesus showed up on on Easter evening, but. On the second Sunday of Easter, Thomas is there too. And he's already made it clear, look, you know what? You guys are saying that you saw Jesus, but unless I see it, actually, he says, guys, I need more than just being able to see it. Unless I stick my finger in those nail holes, unless I stick my hand in the side of Jesus where the Roman soldier cut him open, I'm not going to believe. Really, and kind of nasty if you think about it. I mean, I'm not going to believe that he's really here unless I stick my hand into his bloody side. I mean, Thomas is asking for a lot. And I guess maybe Thomas needs a lot. Because Thomas saw Jesus die. She, he knows, he knows that Jesus is really dead. And he's saying, if I'm going to believe this, I need unequivocal proof because I saw what happened. And Jesus shows up again. And notice what he says. And he says it for the third time. Because it seems like, like three is something that happens a lot in the Bible, that people need to hear something more than once, more than twice. They need to hear it that third time. They need to experience it that third time before it kind of sticks. And so Jesus says to the disciples, Peace be with you. And you notice, too, that he, in bringing that peace again, he does not scold those disciples. He doesn't say to them, Hey, guys, last week I breathed the Holy Spirit into your lives and sent you as the Father sent me. Why are you still sitting here behind the closed doors? What's going on? Jesus does not say that. And Jesus does not scold Thomas for his crazy demands. Instead, he says, Thomas, if you need the proof, here I am. Here I am. Here's the nail holes in my hand. Go ahead. Here's my open side. Do what you need to do so that you can trust me. Don't doubt. Don't hold back, Thomas. You are invited to believe. You are invited to trust. You are invited, Thomas, into relationship. And of course, Thomas sees Jesus, and, and somehow that is enough for him. That is enough for him. He doesn't need to stick his finger in the holes of nails in, his, in Jesus' hands. He doesn't need to stick his hand in Jesus' eyes. He sees Jesus. He recognizes him, recognizes him and he he recognizes him more clearly than the, all the other disciples because he says, my Lord and my God. Thomas recognizes who Jesus really is, that Jesus is God come down to earth, that this, that this, that this crucified and risen Messiah is what God is really like. This embodiment of love and forgiveness is who God is most clearly is. And the thing is, is once, once this happens, once Jesus invites them into that place of peace for the third time, then I think they, they're starting to understand. They're starting to be able to, they're starting to be able to move. They're starting to feel this Holy Spirit in them. There's the, the resurrection life in them to be able to go out and share this incredible good news with the rest of the world, to bring God's love and compassion out to the rest of the world. And isn't that the same as it is with us? That it is a process, and it's a continuous, ongoing process. And the thing is, is this was not, after that third time of peace be with you, that was not the last time that Jesus needed to encourage the disciples to go out and share the message. We know the way the story continues on. This is, this is, a, this is a, a reality into which the disciples live and grow. They, they, as they experience more of the resurrected Jesus, and not, not just in those 40 days between his resurrection and ascension, 
But as they experience the Holy Spirit in their lives throughout their lives, as the message spreads out all over the ancient world, they experience the resurrected Jesus in the same way that we experience the resurrected Jesus. That as we continue to meet Jesus when we worship, when we share the, the bread and cup of Holy Communion, when we sing and pray, when we spend time in silence with God, when we spend time with God in nature, when we are open to that reality of the resurrected Christ in our lives and in our world, that peace also comes to us. Those disciples lived in a very violent, very broken world. They were literally fearful for their own deaths. And Jesus spoke and brought peace into their lives. That didn't mean that everything was magically fixed, that everything was all of a sudden fine, and no, we don't have any worries anymore. But they had the assurance that God was on their side. They had the assurance that they were loved. They had the, the promise that God was with them and that, and that the resurrection of Jesus showed that one day we would all be resurrected too so that we do not have to be afraid. And we can, even in the midst of a broken and dangerous world, have a very real sense of peace. But it does not come quickly. It does not come easily. It's not just you need to hear the gospel one time and then it's done and now you believe it and everything is, everything is fine. We need that encouragement. We need Jesus to continue to show up in our lives. We need to continue to show up for one another, to remind one another that Christ really does live in us, that God's peace is more powerful than the world's violence, that God's love is the most fundamentally true thing that we can ever experience. Thanks be to God.
Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us, your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe, especially in Haiti, Ukraine, Yemen, Syria, Democratic Republic of Congo, Myanmar, Central and South America, Afghanistan, Israel, and Gaza. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, and especially pray for Michael, Kurt and Cindy, Julie, Laurie, Jackie, Gerhard, Brianna and Eliana, Steve and Ellie, Joanne and Frank, Judy, Sapphire, Diane, Dwayne, Reese Ash family, Paul, Lynn Marie, Carol, Rhoda, Jason and family, Jean, Mike, Jamie, Ed, Gail and Richard, Deb, Andrew, Ella, Noreen, Alan, Jim, Jerry, Veronica, 
Sharon, Anne, Bruce and Karen, Sherelle, Bert, Carol, Sue and Artie, Brian, Leslie, Sam, Tom and Sue, Emma, Jim, Ellen, Gade family, Cheryl and Jay, Jocelyn, Bruce and Diana, Jinson, William, Mark, Caleb, Simone and Robert, Lynn, Linda, Paula, Al, Jason, Kelly and Jim, Chelsea, Lori, Declan, Sandy, Kim and David, Caroline, Liz, Dolores, Wendy, Rain, Dennis, Eileen, Ian and Chrissy, Jasmine, Bruce, Dan, Norman, Michael, Robert, Holly and Andy, all of our shut-ins, the people of Shishmaref and all Alaskan villages. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve God of grace. Hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trouble, trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. As I always say at the end of these virtual worship services, we continue to be the church together. We might not always be here together at 20 Middle Lark Road, but we are together in service, we are together in spirit, we are together in community. And we continue to bless one another and we continue to serve our communities. We continue to serve the wider world. And now may Almighty God, who raised again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, bless you abundantly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.